Hey gang, we are back at it. It is March 3rd, beautiful sunny day. We've had a few rainy days, but we are arriving here at a place called Chalmette, a very famous place where a famous battle was fought. And there's a cemetery here with someone that is quite remarkable, a woman who did some amazing things, and I think was a hero. And we're in. I am standing near a very famous place that happened back in the War of 1812. It was the Battle of Chamet. What battle is that? Basically that was the Battle of New Orleans. And basically that was a pivotal battle that would turn the tide and cap the end of the War of 1812. It was Andrew Jackson who was here with 5,000 men, which included Tennessee volunteers, it included many men from different territories and states from the West. And it also included a pirate and his men named Jean Lafitte. In exchange for releasing some of his men or all of his men from a previous battle, they worked up an agreement to work together. And it was his ship that was helping out. There's a woman here that's buried in the cemetery that's adjacent to where this battle happened. And her name was Sarah Wakeman. Not a lot of you have heard about her, but I'm gonna tell you her story because she was a very remarkable woman. Let's take a walk to her grave. This is a monument here, one of many it has a drum with a teepee of flags on top. Beautiful work. But we're not here to focus as much on that today. We're going to look for Sarah. Now, Sarah Wakeman did not fight in the War of 1812. She fought in the Civil War. How did she fight in the Civil War? Well, she disguised herself as a man. And we're going to talk about it. Let's talk about her background. Now, she was born in 1843 in Bainbridge, New York. She had nine brothers and sisters. She was the oldest. And by the time she turned 17, she was basically, although she had education, she was just working as a, like a civil servant. And she's like, I'm out of here. Especially when she saw a poster that offered a bunch of money as a bounty to sign up for the army. So off she went. Now one thing to start to talk about here is she wrote a lot of letters the whole time. And that's the only reason we're able to talk about her, know anything about her. And those letters uh, were saved. And we'll talk about that. But Everything that I'm going to tell you is from her letters. It's just some amazing accounts. On August 30th, 1862, she changed her first name to Lyons. And Lyons Wakeman claimed to be 21 years old, enlisted as a private in Company H of the 153rd New York State Volunteers. Basically, that was in Route, New York. She was only 17 years old 
and there are records that show that in her enlistment papers it did show that interestingly that she was five feet tall she was fair skinned she had brown hair and she had blue eyes so her regiment was assigned guard duty in Alexandria Virginia and later in Washington DC to protect the nation's food supply She wrote, I like to be a soldier very well. Then she spent some time as a guard at Washington's Carroll Prison. Now get this, during her time there, there were three women being held at the prison, arrested for the crime that Wakeman was committing. Well, she finally saw battle as the 153rd Regiment was transferred to an active battlefield February 1864. And her unit participated in General Nathan P. Banks' ill-fated Red River Campaign. Now this was a terrible botched battle of ill planning, terribly conceived tactics. Anyway, everything went wrong. The force numbered around 11,000 soldiers, but she survived. But that's when she sent her last letter home, sadly. I'm going to read to you an excerpt from her last letter. She said, our army made an advance up the river to Pleasant Hill, about 40 miles. There we had a fight. The first day of the fight, our army got whipped, and we had to retreat back about 10 miles. The next day, the fight was renewed. The firing took place about 8 o'clock in the morning. There was heavy cannonballing all day, sharp firing of infantry. I was not in the first day's fight, but the next day I had to face the enemy bullets with my regiment. I was under fire about four hours. I laid on the battlefield all night. There were three wounded in my company and one killed. I feel thankful to God that he spared my life. And I pray to him that he will lead me safe through the field of battle and that I may return safe home. Well, she didn't return safely home, sadly. The Red Ripper campaign claimed several lives, and that directly or indirectly claimed Sarah's, because she contacted dysentery, and she eventually died from it. Her grave is right up here. So many fallen. We're going to walk along the back of these. So we don't step on any of those that are buried underneath. Now, some of you will laugh or ridicule, but I try to do this, and my feeling on it is it's really all in the intent. It's all in the intent. I mean, you're not going to be able to do it all the time, but somebody from the channel who's a grave digger or somebody maintaining cemeteries actually an old cemetery sunk up to his waist standing on a grave those old coffins an old coffin gave way and his his feet went right down into the coffin how'd you like that i don't want to do that <laughs> so here is her grave 
there is an open spot right here there are no there's about three open spots it looks like so let's have a look I'm gonna come from this side Yep, Lions Wakeman. All it says is Lions Wakeman, New York. Who would ever know? Who would ever know the story? I sure wouldn't. I just happened to come across it, and she deserves to be remembered. Her letters and their record of her military experiences were discovered almost a century after her death. Where were they found? They were found in a relative's attic. Can you imagine stumbling across that? Her descendants still have the letters. One photograph, which we see, and a ring of Sarah's. We otherwise wouldn't know this story. And there is a book called An Uncommon Soldier. I haven't read it yet, but I highly recommend, I highly recommend it without even reading it because it's gotta contain a lot of uh, the letters and all the experiences. Just, just what I read was spine tingling, in my opinion. So, brave woman and we hope that she is resting in peace.